Need to troubleshoot why your network isn't working? Or just want to see what IoT devices are doing on your network? In this video, we will be looking at using the TCP dump program to capture network packets. Please help me out by hitting the subscribe button because it's now or never. In this video, we are going to be looking at TCP dump, which is a command line packet analyzer. It can capture packets and also read back a PCAP file. TCP dump is already preloaded on Kane, Parrot OS, and other incident response Linux distros. But if you are using another distro where it's not loaded, you can go to tcpdump.org for download instructions. Once you're ready, just type TCP dump. So we'll get an error that tells us that we don't have the permission to capture on that device. So basically we need to use sudo to run TCP dump as root because this is now going out to a device which needs administrator privileges. So let's try again with sudo tcp dump. Now we see a lot of stuff flashing across the screen. A little too much as a matter of fact, and it just doesn't stop. Well, there's a couple of things we can do. One thing we can do is type control C. This will terminate tcp dump when you're done with capturing packets. To have tcp dump stop by itself, we can limit its operation to the number of packets specified by the dash C option. So if we do sudo tcp dump dash C five, what we're gonna see is that there's gonna be five packets that are captured and then the program will stop. Another way to limit the output from TCP dump is to select only interfaces where there is traffic of interest. Some systems have multiple network interfaces on different networks. So depending on what you're trying to do, you will need to know what network you will want to analyze. An old standby command is ifconfig. We can use the dash A for all interfaces, even if they're currently down. Then we can pipe the output through grep to only look for the line with the words MTU, as that would just give us the condensed list. On this machine, I can see the wired ethernet interface. It's called ETH0. I also see the loopback device, LO, which is standard to all machines. And then lastly, we see this long WL blah, 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 which is my external wired antenna. We can also use the TCP dump command with a dash D option to see what interfaces TCP dump sees. So if we do sudo TCP dump dash capital D, here we see the ethernet, ETH0, and then the external wireless, and then the word any, which basically means all devices, and then the loop back, LO, and then the Bluetooth monitor, something called the Linux net filter log, something else called the Linux net filter queue, and then dbus dash system and dbus dash session. So we get a few more interfaces than ifconfig does. And you can select the number of the interface or the name. I recommend the name as it's more clear when somebody goes through your logs. Plus those numbers could change when you reboot the machine. And if you specify any, then it will capture from all interfaces. So we can try sudo tcp dump dash i of any. And as you can see from the output here, we have things that are coming out from the ethernet. We have things from the loopback. We have something from the external wireless. If we do sudo tcp dump dash i of one, right? One is the ethernet. So now we are only looking at things that are coming off the ethernet connection for this machine. We can do the same thing by specifying sudo tcp dump dash i of eth zero. I recommend using this method instead of specifying a number because those numbers are not really meaningful and they can change. Another example, we can do t, uh, sudo tcp dump dash i of lo. Now we're only looking at the traffic on the loopback. And lastly, if I wanna just look at traffic on the external Wi-Fi, I can do sudo tcp dump dash i of wlx, etc. To further narrow down what you're looking for, tcp dump can use filters. And you can filter by host name, by a network, by specific port number, or range of ports. You can also filter for the source of the packets, the destination of the packet, 
or a specific address for the packet. So let's say if we're only interested in the traffic coming from and going to a specific host, we can use the host specifier. So we do sudo tcp dump dash i of eth zero, right? So we're, let's look at just the ethernet for this demo. And then we're gonna type the word host. And then the name of the host in this case is Kane. So here we see traffic that only involving the machine Kane. Right, so here are some packets are going from Kane and here are some packets that are going to Kane. But every packet that we see here involves Kane as either the source or the destination. And if we cared only about the traffic originating from that host, we can add the SRC, the source word, before the word host. sudo tcp dump dash i eth0 src host Kane. Here, we only see traffic where the machine Kane is the source of the packets. So all the other packets which Kane was the destination are no longer shown. And if we flip it around, if we only cared about traffic ending at a particular host, we can add the word DST for destination before the word host. And you can also use an IP address instead of the host name. So let's do sudo tcp dump dash i eth0 DST host, we're going to put in the IP address for my machine, Kane, and it's at 10.0.2.12. So here we are only seeing traffic where the machine Kane is the destination for the packets. And you can also use a MAC address instead of the IP address. If you're looking for a specific machine that might have moved networks and now more than likely has a different IP. So you can do sudo tcp dump dash i eth0 ether host. And then my MAC address is 0800027 echo2 echo951. And instead of a specific host, we can also filter for a range of addresses by specifying the network along with the net mask. So let's go ahead and do sudo tcp dump dash i eth0. So with the network we're going to look at is 10.0.2.4. And we're going to apply the mask of 255.255.255.252. So this should limit the number of machines that we're going to be seeing. And because the mask that we set here, we're only seeing traffic from the machine that's named Fedora. But I noticed that the output here that the machines are referred to by their host names. So it's actually hard to see whether the filter for the IPs is actually working or not. So we can tell TCP dump to not convert the addresses to names and port numbers. And we can use the dash N option so that this demo is easier to see. So I'm going to go ahead and up arrow and then dash N. Now we can see the traffic and it's all showing the IP numbers instead of the machine names. And as we can see, we're only looking at traffic for the machine that's named dot four. All of the other machines that have IP numbers are not in this range are not picked up. With TCP dump, we can limit the capture traffic to and from port numbers. So if we are only interested in traffic involving port 22, which is gonna be the SSH traffic, we can specify just the port 22. So let's do sudo tcp dump dash i eth0 port 22 and then dash n because once again we want it to actually show us the port numbers instead of the names like ICMP or SSH and so forth. So we're now only looking at traffic that involves SSH traffic or port 22. We can add another filter to only look at port 22 of a specific host. And so we can be using the AND operator to create that filter. So in this case, we're gonna do sudo tcp dump dash i eth0 src host 10.0.2.12 and port 22 dash n. And now we are only seeing traffic from that host where it's port 22. And besides the AND operator, there's also the OR operator, right? So if we up arrow and change the AND to an OR, so now we are looking at traffic where it originated from the machine.12 
or anything that involves port 22. So we should have a little bit more packets than the last run. Finally, we also have the not operator, not, right? So this is going to be reverse logic. So if you do sudo tcp dump dash i eth0 source host 10.0.2.12 and not port 22 dash n, now we're going to be seeing any traffic that's coming from the host of dot 12, but not from port 22, which should be just all of the ping traffic. Using TCP dump, you can filter by protocols such as TCP, UDP, ICMP, ARP, etc. So if we only want to see the ARP traffic, we can do sudo TCP dump dash I ETH zero of ARP. And so this kind of a filter might be of interest if you want to see if there is any ARP poisoning activity on your network. And once again, we can use the operators like and, or, and not to craft the filter. So if we don't care about ICMP traffic, but we want to have everything else on this network, we can do sudo TCP dump dash I ETH zero, not ICMP. So now we see all the traffic that's on this network, but not the ICMP traffic. If you are using TCP dump in a script, you will probably want to have the output go into a file for further analysis instead of just scrolling onto the screen. We can specify a output file by using the dash w option. So if we type sudo tcp dump dash w slash temp slash demo dot pcap, if you just give it the path of where you want to save the pcap file. And then for this demo, I'm going to do dash C25, so it knows when to stop. Now if we want to look at the output file, we can do a list of slash temp slash demo dot pcap. We see that it's raw data and is not human friendly. So to make it human readable, we can use TCB dump with a dash R option to read the file and parse and display the contents. Note that since we're reading from a file and not an interface, we actually don't need root privileges to run this command. TCP dump dash R slash temp slash demo dot pcap. And because we captured 25 packets, it actually is more than this page can handle. So it's going to scroll off the screen. So if you want to read it easier, you can pipe it through the less command. And once the PCAP is already captured, you can actually manipulate the output with a couple of other keys. So one of them is the dash E option where you can display the data and the link level. So if you want to see the MAC addresses, you can do TCP dump dash R of slash temp slash demo dot PCAP dash E. Now you can see that it shows you the MAC addresses instead of the IP addresses. If you want to look at the packet data in hex and ASCII format, we can use the dash XX option. First, let's see what the default output looks like if we limit the count to just one to make things easier. So I'm going to do TCP dump dash R slash temp slash demo dot PCAP dash C one. So here's the one packet captured. You can see that this is the summary. But if we want to see the full packet in hex and ASCII, we can up arrow and then add the dash capital X capital X. And so here you can see this section here where it breaks it out in hex form and then ASCII form. But obviously in ASCII is not going to be any use because most of this is encoded in some manner. By default, TCB dump will display the timestamps of each packet captured. So let's go ahead and take a look at what it looks like if we do tcp dump dash r slash temp demo dot pcap dash c3. So let's just take a look at three packets. So you can see here this first column here is going to be the timestamp. And then if we don't want to see a timestamp, we're going to use the dash t option. So I'm going to up arrow, add the dash t. And now you can see that the display does not have any timestamp information. And if you want to print the timestamp in Linux style, which basically is the number of seconds since January 1st, 
1970 at 0, 100, 0, 0 minutes UTC time, you can use the dash TT option. So I'm going to go ahead and up arrow and make it a dash TT. And now you can see that each one of these three timestamps is basically in the Linux style where it's in the number of seconds since that epoch time. If you want to print the delta between the current and previous line on each packet, you can use the dash TTT option. So let's go ahead and up arrow and then make it dash TTT. And now you can see the very first line, the timestamp is going to be zero. And then the next one is going to be the whatever microseconds or nanoseconds between each capture of the packets and so on and so forth. And if we want to print the date and timestamp, you can use dash TTTT. So I'm going to do an up arrow, dash TTTT. And now you can see that there's a date associated with the timestamp as well. So yeah, there's plenty of options for manipulating the time, so go nuts. So the basics of TCP dump is that you can look at various interfaces and capture the network traffic. You can filter by host name, network, ports, source, destination, different protocols, etc. You can also write the results to a PCAP file where you can read it back with TCP dump or with another program like Wireshark. The PCAP file contains a lot more information than what appears on the screen as you can specify different display formats and convert to others. For more videos on the Kane Forensics Distro, make sure you watch these videos here. Or if you're interested in learning more about networking, watch these videos here. Make sure you click on the blue monkey to subscribe. Thanks for your time and happy hunting.